I want to welcome all of you, our friends and family that are joining us for our service today. You are going to be absolutely blessed. I love what King David said in Psalm 122 and the very first verse. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Why was David glad? Because when we're in the house of God, we worship, we celebrate, we get to hear the word of God, but we also get to give to our God. And we are going to do that today. Oh, by the way, children, we haven't forgotten you. There's a lot of material for you on our website, watorochurch.com. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, you are our special guest. Please write to us at connectedwatorochurch.com and we'll be in touch with you. But right now, come on, get up on your feet and let's get ready to worship King Jesus. Welcome, church family. Let's get up on our feet and worship Jesus. Come on.
in Psalm 42 verse 1 says that as the deer longs for streams of water, so I, I long for you, O oh God. And you know what, family? God says in His Word that if you draw near to Him, He will draw near to you. And His promises are true. So where you are, why don't you lift up your faith and just surrender to Him? Everything, everything to Him. Because He's faithful. <laughs> yeah, He is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. says in Matthew 11 28 this is what Jesus said come to me all of you who are weary and a heavy burden Jesus promises that if we come to him and surrender he will give us rest so right now I'd like us to take a moment and Vanita is going to lead us in a prayer but I would like you to take a moment where you are just in the quiet of your heart, would you surrender your burdens to Jesus? Would you bring your weariness to Him? He promises to give you rest. Let's take a moment right now. Just be quiet. Go ahead. Surrender those needs.
Lord, you say that if we ask, we will receive. If we knock, the door will be open to us. If we seek, we will find. Now, Lord, your children are asking. They have several needs. And so we ask you, would you meet us at our very different points of need? Would you show yourself strong in our lives? Father, many are sick and need a breakthrough in areas of health. Many are having financial challenges, job challenges, family challenges, Lord, challenges with their children. Would you come through for us, Lord? Because aside from you, we have no one, Lord. I ask you, my master, that today, would you visit your children wherever they are, so that out of this, they will have testimonies of breakthroughs because of your touch. Father, you promise that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. And because of that, we look to you, we trust in you, and our confidence is in you that you will surely meet us at our points of need. So we thank you in advance, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of our service. I know you were already blessed and you are yet to be blessed some more. Well, before we get into God's word, we have something special for the ladies. Right. Ladies, I am especially excited to let you know that sisterhood is back. Now, I recognize that we are living in challenging times, you know, with lockdown and all its difficulties. But you know what? God is raising us up to be women who will thrive through all seasons of life. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about this Friday in our sisterhood conversation with our very own mama, Marilyn Skinner, and some of the other pastor's wives. So why don't you get all your sisters together, bundle up in your living rooms, and join in on that conversation. It will be happening this Friday, the 3rd of July, at 7 p.m., right on our Watoto Church Facebook page. I can't wait to see you. I'm so excited. That's right. I know ladies will be blessed by this conversation. Well, we've come to that moment where we get to hear the Word of God. And I'm so, so excited that today, Pastor Eddie and Martha Mwesidre, our pastoral team leaders, are going to preach God's Word. Would you welcome them as they come to share God's Word? Thank you, Pastors Julius and Vanita, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in and being a part of our celebration service. My name is Eddie, and today I'm so privileged to share today's message with my beautiful wife of 13 years. Thank you, Eddie. It's an honor for me to be with you right here today. Well, my name is Martha Mwesije, and right here at Watoto, I serve with Uganda Support Office Team, where our responsibility is really to highlight and raise awareness about what God is doing in Watoto Child Care Ministries through community care here in Uganda and South Sudan. We also give an opportunity for people to partner with us in many ways. That might be sponsorship, donations, in-kind gifts, so that they too can contribute towards our work of rescuing vulnerable children and women. But hey, it is Family Month and the series is about thriving families. I've been married to Eddie for the last 13 years and God has blessed us with three biological children and many, many more. And many, many more in Watoto. And so today we are concluding a series, Thriving Families, and we are looking at the last block and this is it. Thriving families and thriving relationships have healthy sexual boundaries. And so today, we are gonna talk about sex. Now parents, you are free to stay with your kids who are 10 years and above, but those that are 10 years and below, they are free to enjoy a kids service found online at watodochurch.com forward slash kids. And so as we talk about sex and talk about boundaries um, that are gonna enable us to build thriving relationships and thriving families, I would like to begin by defining what a boundary is. A boundary is a line that marks the limits of an area. Boundaries help us to show us safe zones, but also danger zones. When it comes to our sexuality, we also need healthy boundaries so we can enjoy the benefits of sex. 
but also avoid the dangers that come when we abuse sex. One of the challenges that's plaguing our families and relationships is pain caused from the abuse or misuse of sex. For example, one of the reasons why we see couples separating or divorce today mm -hmm. is unfaithfulness in marriages, which leads to a breakdown in communication or a lack of trust, and they grow apart. Other pains are, you know, abortions because of unwanted pregnancies, people dealing with pains from rape and defilement, children or schoolgirls dropping out of school because they're pregnant. I hope all these are enough to show how much we need healthy sexual boundaries. That's right. Before we can actually appreciate these boundaries, it's very important for us to fully understand what sex is and its importance. The late Miles Monroe once said that when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So, I mean, if I walked into a shop to buy an electric appliance, it comes with a manual, okay? Yep. These are instructions from a manufacturer to tell me how the appliance works, what its purpose is, and how to maintain it. If I went back home and was not careful to follow these instructions, there's a risk that I may damage this appliance, but it might also cause me some harm. Now that we're talking about sex, we really have to go back to the creator. God is the designer of sex and everything we need to know about sex, its importance, and healthy boundaries can be found right in his word. Wonderful, that's very good, dear. So, we want to begin by giving you three truths about sex which are going to confront the wrong mindsets that we have received from our culture. Now, when we embrace this truth and the resulting boundaries, I believe we are going to build healthy families, and healthy relationships. And this is truth number one. Sex is good. Oh yes, you had me, right? Sex is good. And I know perhaps some people are surprised that I'm saying sex is good That's because true. of a lie that we have received from culture that sex is dirty. In fact, when I was growing up as a little child, I used to hear that the sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden, in other words, the forbidden fruit, was sex. <laughs> and so in my little mind, I thought sex is something that is so evil, it's so dirty, it must be avoided because it has brought lots of pain into our world. But you see, friends, the Bible teaches otherwise. Sex was created by God, and everything that God created was good, including sex. Genesis 1.28 says, Then God blessed them, Adam and Eve, and he said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Now, how would they multiply apart from having sex? That was a command from God. Sex is good because it was created by God. And then again in Genesis 2, 24 to 25, that is why a man leaves his father and a mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Don't you love that? Yes, and then Adam and Eve were both naked and they felt no shame. Wow. God's word is reminding us that God created sex as a good thing. It is the perversion of sex that actually brings pain into our lives. And God's purpose for sex was for procreation. It was for pleasure, for bonding, and intimacy. You see, sex is the celebration of marital love. That's very right. You know, with wrong mindsets comes a few dangers. That's right. If in a family the mindset is that sex is dirty and is bad, they will not be talking about it in that family. It will be a mystery. But that won't necessarily mean that the children or people in that home are not learning about sex and that there's no sexual activity actually happening in that home. The children will learn about sex, but from other areas or other modes, like from their peers, from the TV programs they are watching. But this doesn't necessarily make that credible or truth concerning what they're learning. So today we're saying that sex is good, created by God to be enjoyed in the context of marriage. Well, we're moving on to truth number two, which is sex begins with the mind. Well, someone might be wondering, why are we even talking about this? You might be surprised to know that the greatest or biggest sexual organ that we might have isn't the physical one. It is our mind. 
<laughs> well, I'm an engineer, and the best way I can express this is this way. The mind is actually the software that runs or controls the hardware. Read with me. In Matthew chapter 5, 27 to 28, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Well, in the Bible, when we find the word heart, it's used interchangeably with mind to reflect the core of who we are. And here, it's clear to see that Jesus is implying that the sin of adultery doesn't actually begin with the act. It begins with the thought in your mind. So we have to ask ourselves, what is it that we are occupying ourselves with? What is it that we are thinking about? What is it that we are feeding our minds with? I'll give an example. Pornography is something that people consume behind closed doors. But statistics show that pornography many times leads to addictions. People end up with masturbation. And after a while, they'll want to project these things onto other people, leading to sexual violence. Wow. Okay? Take a context like in marriage. If one of the spouse is taken up by pornography, their expectations from their spouse sexually will be unrealistic. This can end up into a lack of intimacy or even a total breakdown of that marriage. So that's why we're saying that the truth is sex begins right here in the mind. And what you do, even behind closed doors all by yourself, not only will affect you, but will spill over to those around you. That's very good. Um, and then truth number three, okay? Sex is more than physical. You see, there's a myth that sex is just physical. In other words, what you do with your physical body does not affect any other part of your body. And this myth or this mindset is expressed in statements like, I can sleep with anybody as long as nobody gets hurt. Yeah nobody gets pregnant, or nobody gets sexually transmitted infections. What about this one? Words like friends with benefits, one night stands. These words are used to sugarcoat sexual sin, and they are meant to treat sex as a casual thing, because hey, sex is just a physical thing and nothing more. And we are telling you today, this is not true. What about this one? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That is very popular today. In other words, you can go and sleep with whoever you want, wherever you are, and when you come back home, everything is going to be okay. But you know what the Bible teaches something different. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, the Bible says here, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two become one flesh. Here Paul was teaching the church at Corinth that was stuck in sexual immorality and he's saying when you have sex with a prostitute, you become one with her. You are glued with the person you have sex with. I like it also in the message translation and here it says this. There is more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever. The kind of sex that can never become one. You see, friends, whoever you have sex with, you become one with them, or you are tied to them. There is a permanence that happens in sex, and that is how God, the designer, designed sex. God designed sex to bond a husband and a wife for life. So every time you have sex out of marriage, you leave a part of who you are with everybody else. You become one with everyone else. So what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas. It stays with you. And here are some consequences. When you are sleeping around with everybody, you damage your level of intimacy that you are you're supposed to experience with your one and only. Not only do you damage your level of intimacy, 
You defile yourself. That's what the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. It says that whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. So my friends, whatever happens in Vegas will find you wherever you go. Sex is more than a physical thing. Sex is experienced in your physical body, but also in your spirit, but also it's experienced in your emotional life. Absolutely. So we were never created to become one with one after one after <laughs> one. No. It's meant to be one, becoming one with your one and only. That's so true. So it's more than physical. So Eddie, we've looked at three truths. Yeah. First one is sex is good. The second one, sex begins with the mind. And the third one, sex is more than physical. What next? How do we move from here to building healthy sexual boundaries? So if you're going to build uh, healthy sexual boundaries, I believe there are two scriptures that we, can, uh, that we can apply into our lives. One of them is Proverbs 4.23 that says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows out of your heart. In other words, we need to guard our hearts yeah. or guard our minds. We need to put a filter on what comes into our minds because garbage in garbage out. That's number one. The second thing that we must do is we must flee from sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says, flee from sexual immorality. Flee is meant to mean flee. Don't negotiate. Don't pray. Don't call your neighbor. Flee as if a wild animal is coming and running after you because sexual sin will ultimately damage you. Now, I know from these two scriptures, you have some practical applications that you want all of us to apply in our lives to build healthy boundaries. Please share with us what you have. Well, talking about the practical setting of healthy sexual boundaries, maybe it it's, might be helpful to break it down in a few categories, starting with singles, marriage, and then a word to the parents. Following up from what you have just said about guarding your heart for the singles, what is it that you are feeding your mind with? Put boundaries around the things that you can watch, the things that you're listening to, you know? Paul cautions us that while everything might be permissible, not everything is necessarily beneficial. So put boundaries around that so that you are not led into temptation. I like what David writes in the Psalms, that your word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. Invest in reading the Word of God so that it can be reminded. You can be reminded when you're going through temptations and Holy Spirit can help you exercise self-control. Another thing for the singles is abstinence from sex before marriage. I remember way back in high school, we used to sign True Love Waits cards, which is a commitment to abstain from sex and anything that might lead to sex before marriage. So that is something you want to put in place. And these are things you put in place before you actually get into a relationship. That's right. Okay, so that by the time you're in a relationship, your standard, your line is already set and wow. you know exactly what to do. Lastly, for singles, is to get an accountability group, friends with whom you share similar values. These are the kind of friends that you will call on when you're in your moment of weakness and they will stand with you, pray with you, encourage you, and help you to flee in terms of temptation. I hope that is clear. I'll move on to the marriage. Well, everything that we have actually talked about guarding your heart is applicable even in marriage. So husband and wife, sit down and put boundaries on what kind of materials you will watch or listen to, because believe me, that affects what you do, what you say, and how you treat each other in this marriage. For the married, they already have a license, a marriage certificate that throws away any restrictions on sex. So put boundaries that will encourage you to be faithful to each other in marriage. If it is with interactions of the people of the opposite sex, maybe you put a boundary on when that stops, okay? I mean, in our marriage, at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., if I'm talking to another gentleman, I think you will wonder what's going on, OK? 
okay? So put in place some of those boundaries that enable you to work on your marriage. And I hope that the rest of the topics that we've covered in this series of thriving families, for example, effective communication or conflict resolution, are very key and are being helpful to you in working out some of those issues in marriage so that you grow together in love. And since the marrieds are allowed to have sex, okay, the other guideline or boundary is not to withhold from each other, okay? Do not deprive one another from sex. 1 Corinthians 7, 5 reads, do not deprive one another except with consent for a time, that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So that is something that marriage need to draw a boundary, not to use sex as you know, a punishment, okay? Not to withhold from each other. Lastly, for the marriage is to encourage them to also find an accountability group. That's right. Here at Watoto, we do have the married cells, mm -hmm. where married people come together, share experiences, do a few courses together, all for the purpose of growing together and encouraging each other so that we build strong and healthy marriages. As we talk about these guidelines, you know, or boundaries, these are just a few examples. I believe that this will just empower you to go on afterwards to talk a little bit more. For the parents, okay? Children are a blessing from God, and we are encouraged to teach these children the way they should grow so that when they're older, they do not depart from it. Parents, it is our responsibility to teach our children about sex, okay? You know, as a very young parent, I'm glad that I subscribed to some Christian parenting podcast that, you know, taught how to introduce this topic of sex in an age-appropriate way. I'm glad I did, because right now, when my oldest has questions, she comes to me, and I'm glad she does, because that helps me understand where she is, what she's grappling with, how I can pray for her, but also affirm her using the word of God by answering her questions appropriately. Do not let your children learn about sex from other sources that might not be credible or might not have the standard of God as their basis. Another boundary that parents can put in place is on what the children are watching from home. Now, parents, I know we love these children. We've given them everything. They have the tablets, they have computers, they have access to television and unlimited internet access. But are you sure you're fully aware about what they're watching? So many people out there have different agendas for our children. And if we're not vigilant, even the cartoons we think are for children, some of them do have heavy sexual content. Be alert, put parental controls, make sure that what they are watching is appropriate for them and they are learning things that are beneficial for them. Lastly, a boundary for the parents is the people that we're letting into our homes and have access to our children. Are they the kind that share the same values with us? You know, sometimes it's hard to listen to adults sharing about their experiences as a child and how they were introduced to sexual content and activity to people that their parents had let into the home and trusted. Some of these went as far as letting these people share bedrooms with the children and the children have been damaged. And some of these children could not tell their parents. Why? Because remember, the mindset then was sex is dirty, it's bad, and we do not talk about it. Right now, they're still struggling with it, and it takes God to heal them from that. So parents, make sure that these boundaries are very clear in your home. Make sure that the people you let inside your home are able to abide by those boundaries so that we can teach our children, but also protect them from all this unhealthy sexual content. Those are some of the guidelines that I have. Wow, those are very many, but I believe there are even many more that you as parents need to talk about to guard the hearts of your children, but also guard your hearts as well. Now, as I conclude, I want to read a scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. And this is what the Bible says. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Maybe you feel you've messed up in this area of your sexuality. You may think that your sin is beyond forgiveness from God. 
But I want to let you know that God values you and there is no mistake, there is no sin that cannot be forgiven. Why? Because you were created by God. He owns you. He created you. He values you. Your value is not tied to what you've done in your past. He created you. And the second thing is, he sent Jesus to die for your sins. And so at this moment, I want us to pray. Would you come to Jesus for forgiveness? And I'm going to ask my wife to lead us in that moment. Thank you, Eddie. When we're talking about messing up, I'm actually reminded of a story in the Bible where a lady was caught in adultery and brought to Jesus. And the men were pushing for Jesus, saying, you know, the Lord tells us that we need to stone her. What do you say? Jesus tells them, the one without a sin, be the first one to throw a stone. He bends down to write in the sand, and one by one, they leave. By the time he looks up, he asks her, where are the people that were accusing you? Did none of them condemn you? Mm. She says, none. And Jesus tells her, neither do I. Go and sin no more. So whatever it is that you might be caught up in right now, know that Jesus is ready, he's waiting, and he's willing to forgive you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth that is in your word. We thank you that today, as we were talking about healthy sexual boundaries, there are things that you've shown us in our lives that need to change. Some of us may be caught up in sexual addictions. Some of us, our marriages are on the brink of breakdown because of decisions that we have made that are wrong. Whatever situation we might be in, Lord, we know that it is not too hard for you. Your word tells us that when we repent, you're faithful and just. You will forgive us of all our sin and cleanse us from all our wrongdoing. Mm. May we accept this forgiveness from you. May we also forgive ourselves as well as seek forgiveness from the people that we have hurt. And now, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, I ask that you will give us the wisdom and strength to put in place boundaries and measures so that we will not go back to our sinful lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And lastly, I would like to pray for many of you who would love to surrender your hearts to Jesus Christ because it all begins when we give our hearts to Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus died for your sins so that you can have eternal life. And now if you want to receive forgiveness from Jesus, I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, this day I confess with my mouth that I need your forgiveness. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Give me a brand new start. I choose to follow you. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, the Bible says you are a new person. Your record of wrong has been erased forever and you are a brand new Christian. Welcome to God's family. And now, would you please Click that link in the message sections for you. All of you who are watching online, but also if you're watching on air or listening in on air, you can write to us at connect at watodochurch.com. We would love to connect with you. Thank you so much for being a part of this service. And now we are turning this service over to pastors Julius and Vanita Rotlonio. God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Eddie and Martha, for sharing God's Word in a very practical way. We've been absolutely blessed by your teaching today. Thank you. If you have given your life to Jesus, I want to congratulate you as well and welcome you to the family of God. Wow, wow, wow. Well, we've come to the time in the service where we get to give of our tithes and our offerings to God. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so whenever we give, not only does God bless us, but he also takes what we've given and he uses it as a blessing to many. And that's why we love to give to God to advance his kingdom. The giving instructions are going to come in a moment, but right now, I'd like to pray for us as we get ready to give. Now, Father, I want to thank you that you have blessed us with increase, and out of it, we get to give back to you so we can advance your kingdom. So as your children give, I pray you'll open up the heavens 
and pour out your blessing upon each and every one of them and take what we've given, use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You can give using mobile money, direct bank transfer, or any banking agent within your community. But also, if you live close to any of our celebration points, you can simply walk over and slip your cash offering into one of the gift boxes. Now, for those using mobile money, let me walk you through the steps you would take. For MTN, dial star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code is 148775. That is star 165 star 3 hash and the merchant code is 148775. And for Airtel, you dial star 185 star 4 star 9 hash and the business number is 700,000. That is 7 followed by 5 zeros. Again, it's star 185 star 4 star 9 hash and the business number is 7 followed by 5 zeros. For more giving options, check out our website watotochurch.com forward slash give. But you can also use your phone to scan the QR code which will take you straight to the different giving options. And for your Watoto Child sponsorship, dial star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. Then enter the merchant code WCCM in capital letters. Again, that is star 165 star 4 star 4 hash. The merchant code is WCCM in capital letters. Now as a reference, type the sponsor's full name only. Fill in the amount to be paid and finally fill in your MTN mobile money pin. Thank you for your generosity.
what an opportune time this is for us to live out exactly what Watoto Sisterhood is all about, a community of women united in friendship, passion, and purpose. Now for some of you ladies, you may be thinking, hmm, right now I feel all alone, or I feel like God is very distant from me. It's quite challenging a season as it is. You know, I'm reminded of what the Word of God says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. All things have their season, and in their times, all things pass under heaven. Guess what? God is raising us up to be women for all seasons. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about with some of the pastor's wives in our sisterhood conversation. And you know who will be joining us? Our very own mama, Marilyn Skinner, will be there to share wise words of godly counsel with us. So you don't want to miss this one. So why don't you invite your sisters, your mother, your grandmother, in fact, invite your brothers as well, and get together in your living rooms and join in on our sisterhood conversation happening on Friday the 3rd of July at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page at Wetoto Church, Uganda. I can't wait to see you there. I've really been blessed by this service. I hope you've also been blessed. Thank you for joining us today. Now, should you need prayer or counseling, please drop us an email at connect at wetotochurch.com and we'll be sure to reach out to you. You can also text on the numbers on your screen and somebody will be in touch with you. If you would like to catch any of our other messages or find more giving options, please don't hesitate. Go to our website, wetotochurch.com. And ladies, don't you forget the Sisterhood Conversation this Friday at 7 p.m. God bless you. Have a fantastic week.